Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about new guidelines for the use of PARP inhibitors in people who have breast cancer related to having an abnormal gene in BRCA1 or BRCA2. The PARP inhibitors are a powerful class of drug that works specifically in tumors that have a mutation in BRCA1 or BRCA2. Until recently, we used the PARP inhibitors, specifically Olaparib, in people who had advanced disease, that is metastatic disease where the breast cancer had spread away from the breast and the lymph nodes to other parts of the body. But recent data support the use of Olaparib in people who have been ostensibly cured with surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or endocrine therapy. What we now know is that in people with higher risk disease, and I'll explain that in just a minute, the PARP inhibitors improve survival. So this is what led, leads to this being our new recommendation based on the literature. So who's at high risk? Well, in people who have BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutations, where the tumor is estrogen receptor negative and HER2 negative, we are recommending use of the PARP inhibitors for a year. It's oral, so I'll tell you how we take it in just a minute, but we recommend it for a year if the tumor was greater than two centimeters or if there were any positive nodes. And remember, two centimeters is less than an inch, so this doesn't have to be a very large tumor but we do consider these patients eligible for PARP inhibitors. And if you, no matter the size of the tumor, if it was estrogen receptor negative and HER2 negative, we recommend if any nodes were positive, a year of elaborate. What about people whose tumors were estrogen receptor positive and HER2 negative, who carry a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation? We are also recommending that people get elaborate if their um, tumor was larger, if they got chemotherapy and there was still residual cancer afterwards, if the grade is high, grade three, you can watch our other video on what grade is related to stage. Similarly, in people with ER negative cancer, if you get chemotherapy first and there's still cancer left, we are recommending the PARP inhibitors as well. Now, you may also be getting additional chemotherapy, and we don't recommend that you get a laparib with that additional chemotherapy. You should probably wait till after the chemo to start the elaborib. All right, I'm going to recap all of that. Elaborib useful only in people with tumors with, who have a BRCA1 or 2 mutation. If the tumor is ER negative and it's two centimeters or there are any positive nodes or after chemotherapy there's still residual cancer, we're recommending a lab route. In tumors that are estrogen receptor positive, we are recommending based on the size of the tumor and the grade so if it's a higher grade tumor, very different from stage, um, but also if it's a higher stage. There's more information that we can give you in the link below, but that's sort of the broad overview. And again, it should, if you're getting additional chemo after the chemo that was planned up front, Olaparib should follow that. So what's Olaparib? Well, it's a pill and it inhibits the enzyme called PARP, which we're spelling out on the screen for the sake of time. It's a very long term. And it, these drugs are oral. So you take two pills, usually twice a day. And the side effects, which are really important to know about, include um, some nausea that tends to get better for most people, but not everybody, over the course of that year. So it might be most intense at the beginning. Most people don't get nausea, but if you do, it, you can expect that it will probably get better. The other side effect is fatigue. This is not severe, and it may actually be related to your other treatments that you're recovering from, but we also want you to know about that. And the most important side effect to know about is anemia. And it's anemia that's quite severe. We call it grade three. So you don't end up in the hospital and it's not lethal, but you may need a transfusion. Transfusions are very safe these days. 
Looks like this occurs in about 9% of people taking Olaparib, so close to 1 in 10. And the thing to know about the anemia is it, gets, it can happen at any time in the course of the year. So your blood work may look great at one month, two months, three months, and then at four months you may be anemic. So we do check blood work monthly and you may find that you need treatment specifically with transfusions if you are on a lab rib. Again, fewer than one in 10 people, but it's an important side effect. So I've covered a lot. Who gets a lab rib for non-metastatic or early stage breast cancer associated with BRCA1 or 2 mutations? And the people in whom we recommend it depends on whether the tumor is estrogen receptor positive or negative. And also if you have chemotherapy first, how much is left afterwards? It's an oral drug. We covered the common side effects. I hope this has been helpful to you. This was just updated at the end of 2020. If you have any comments, drop them below and we'll respond. And if this hasn't been helpful, like and subscribe, and that'll help other people going through this very same thing who might be interested in seeing this video. Thanks.